Oh, help me, Dr. Zayas. On Steam, developer Fluxcopic Limited give Mayhem and Single Valley this introduction in this fast-paced, puzzle-loaded action-adventure. You'll juggle housework, zombie hordes, family dinners, and radioactive squirrels. Oh, and you'll have to prevent the end of the world while keeping everyone from finding out it was all your fault. Most of that description is fine, though I would change housework to missions. Also, I don't recall any family dinners. The first chapter of this game released on Steam last year, called Mayhem in Single Valley Confessions. The game cover shows exactly what you'll be doing. The story. Mayhem in Single Valley provides just enough, but not too much time into telling a story throughout Jack's adventure. The plot starts with you playing a brief dream sequence. It involves rescuing clones falling from a plane before waking up in your bedroom. From here, the art style shifts from 2D side-scroller to 3D sprite graphics. The prologue involves doing various chores in the house like lure your deadbeat dad with beer, as well as pick up and bend your dog's constant diarrhea before your skin melts off. That death is a clue of what you'll be in for later. Once the chores are done, Jack is about to leave home for college when suddenly he sees everything has gone to pot outside his home. Dangerous chemicals from a truck have spilt onto the water, causing any living creature that touches it to morph into a toxic monster. After that, a jogger shows up and for some reason thinks Jack caused this problem, since he can see our hero in the distance. Then he takes off to report Jack and ruin his life. Why the jogger didn't think to ask the truck driver what happened is a mystery. Fluxcopic Limited seemed to be taking a pot shot at the craziness cancel culture can stoop to. An old lady also gets mauled by a mutant squirrel, which initially hints the story will have a darker tone. However, when Jack goes outside, we find out she's fine. The squirrel then pickpockets Jack and escapes, so it's up to Jack to journey through this crazy environment and save the world, restore his good name and his belongings. Collect a fawn platformer. Mayhem in Single Valley becomes more enjoyable after a few hours in. That's when puzzles become more intricate, with some involving using items you find like the slingshot and umbrella. It's also due to the game increasing the challenge, as it expects players to be more accustomed to the gameplay. Environments and hazards change as you travel from, say, a grassy to a desert-like area. Each new area offers different enemies too. The numerous puzzles Jack encounters are not for the impatient, however. There's often points throughout your journey where you'll often be bamboozled as to what you need to do. It took me a few hours to figure some of the puzzles out. Sometimes it's better to turn off the game and solve the puzzle on a different day with a fresh mind. Throughout the world, there are collectibles and derpy clones of Jack, both in places that test your platforming skills. The clones are more important though, as each one drops an upgrade that can be used to unlock items like faster running shoes and more backpack capacity. As for the collectibles, they're just for bragging rights. I did find a few issues that need to be fixed though. There's a section in the middle of the game where you fall into a pit if you backtrack enough. Unfortunately, there's no way to get back out, so you need to load your last save. So save often. Also, if you find an upgrade to Jack's shoes, you still have to buy another pair to upgrade them further. This makes finding the shoes seem pointless. These are minor grievances, but they're worth mentioning. One of the strangest glitches I've discovered playing a game was fighting the blue light boss dressed in a tuxedo. While figuring out how to beat him, I decided to throw all my projectiles at him in the hope that something would happen. What happened was all the projectiles spun around him like he was the centre of a gravitational vortex. The more that were added, the slower the frame rate got. It got so bad the game froze and I had to reboot it and I lost all my progress. Be ready to fail. When doing chores in the house, instructions are clear what you need to do. Shortly after, when you venture into the big bad world, you receive no instructions. The menu shows the controls, but all you can do is avoid enemies as you explore. Meanwhile, the pause screen cycles through hints that can be useful. However, the one saying to take Jack's shoes off if he's moving too fast is strange. This is because most of the game, his moves are quite sluggish. There's lots of items to pick up on the ground, each to distract a different type of enemy for a few seconds, but most of the time it's easier just to run past them challenge. The fact Jack cannot kill anything makes this game quite challenging. Not to mention the enemies are relentless, especially the rabbits which you meet early on. These can quickly teleport over short range and can kill you like they're from Dragon Ball Z. 
Each type of enemy has a different attack pattern and a mixture of different types can easily catch a player off guard. Jack dies in one hit unless he can find the occasional dust pin lid, then it's two hits. It's better than nothing I guess. As I mentioned earlier, Jack moves very slow, so the faster way to travel is performing rolls. It felt like playing The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Make sure to time these when close to enemies as Jack is invulnerable while rolling. However, there is a short delay after each roll and you can bet foes will take advantage of that. Visuals and audio. For an indie title, the animated sprites look nice, but they're not groundbreaking. In the forest area, I found the combination of dull colors, slow gameplay moments and bit tune music left me feeling a little drained at times. What I do like is when you're high up, you can see details of the backdrop, like other platforms with NPCs and enemies doing their animations. Animals move how you'd expect for the most part. Reflections and shadows are also done right. In terms of audio, while the bit to music and sound effects can be hit or miss in my opinion, they fit the theme of the game and there's plenty of them. Around two thirds of the music is fine, but the rest just sounded like high pitched noise to me. Luckily, you can switch between music tracks on your radio whenever you want. The only sound effect I hated was for the humans, whose sound is ear grating as the humans in Minecraft. <coughs> I think more bit tune music genre variation would have given certain game moments more of an impact. For example, during the sad scene of the old man, a piano or violin solo could have been playing, or during a high adrenaline moment, like avoiding the train, an electric guitar could be playing. Verdict. People who love old school, sprite based, highly challenging games will most likely enjoy Mayhem in Single Valley. If this game released 10 years ago, it probably would have been healed alongside countless highly rated modern retro titles like Super Meat Boy, Limbo, Fez and many others. Also, having an easier game mode would have helped garner attention as it's a well known fact a lot of game journalists are bad at video games. Now in an arguably oversaturated market, it may fall under the radar for most of its target audience. And that's a shame because if you can get past the first few slow hours of the game, it is a quality title with plenty of variation that is fun to play. It's worth the asking price of around $15 and has a measly 2GB install that can run on your parents old laptop. The fact this is only the second game published by small indie developer Fluxcopic Limited is a marvel in of itself. I predict great things of this developer in the future. I give Mayhem in Single Valley a 7 out of 10. B plus, it's praiseworthy. Hello guys, hope you're having a fantastic day. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more videos.